Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our award-winning travel podcast, Smart People Travel Wise, a platform where we discuss all things about travel. I'm your host, Tenny Stamaki, coming to you from my hometown of Woodside, Queens, New York City. And it's April, guys. Uh, can you believe it's the first week of April 2023, meaning that you should be thinking of your travel plans, whether if you want to take a short trip, a uh, short getaway, because I know for me, spring break is coming up and I'm very excited on that. Or you're thinking about summer travel or even plans for 2024 or 2025. And today's episode, I bring back my fellow Travel Wise International travel advisor and good friend of mine that I just met last year, <laughs> Ronald Loveris. And we're going to discuss you know, some of the great deals uh, that are happening in travel to help you travel wise and some springtime getaways if you're thinking about getting away um during mm. the spring springtime because april from april to june it's one of the best times to travel but before we get started i like to remind everybody that if you are watching this live hashtag live and if you are watching on replay hashtag replay make sure you tell us where you're coming from so we can acknowledge all of you don't forget to like us on facebook and youtube you could also listen on Amazon Fire, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Download the PHLV radio app available on all iOS and Android phones. And I'm not forgetting anything. I always forget one thing. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Fire. Okay, but Apple. you get what I'm saying. Apple Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ronald. Because my fellow travel advisor knows because he's done this podcast so many times and without further ado um i'm gonna welcome him back ronald laveras and he's gonna start us off telling us some of this uh some of the sales that are going on in travel from cruises land tours go ahead ronald welcome back well lately my um hi everybody uh thanks for having me back teddy so glad to be back. So lately, I'm actually been focused on cruising. So um, most of the time right now, I've been selling a lot of Virgin Voyages, uh, a couple of uh, Royal Caribbean, as well as Nor uh, Norwegian cruise lines. So um, for the current promotions with Virgin Voyages, from now through April 11th, we are actually, um, they are giving 45% off the second sailor um, as well as saving up to, or not saving, but like getting up to $300 or $600 of sailor loot that you can actually use on board. So anything, any sailing that is six nights and below, you get $300, $300 sailor loot. Anything above six nights, you'll have $600 sailor loot. So it's actually pretty awesome. Oh, well, actually, correction, correct that. It's not sailor loot, it's bar tab. <laughs> <laughs> See, all the money is crazy because I've been working with other clients earlier today. Um, in terms of uh, Royal Caribbean, right now they are uh, uh, they're uh, promoting a thirty percent off of all cruises, and if you are actually a family type of uh, a group, uh, kids will sail for free. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, that is going to be um, um, uh, the offer is actually going to be done in about. Um, uh, one more day, so uh, at the end of tomorrow, um, April 4th, that offer will be going away, and who knows what, what other offers they're going to do, so stay tuned for that one. Now, <clears throat> currently, I am working on a uh, December 2024 uh, Christmas markets on the Ryan Cruise, which is a river cruise with Ama Waterways. Um, that is actually going from Amsterdam down to Basel, uh, Switzerland, so it's seven nights, uh, it's going to be fun. It'll be cold, but I look forward to experiencing the uh, Christmas markets uh, from the various countries there. Um, but also, if you're actually booking any 2023, 2024 uh, um, cruises with Ama Waterways, there are particular sailings where you can actually get free um, pre or post land tours. So 
If you're looking for exploring other countries, uh, in addition to a river cruise, uh, you should check out amawaterways.com and see if any of those type of cruises and land uh, excursions or tours will be suitable for you. So that's about it for now. That's great. And I think everybody who is planning on traveling um, or is interested in river cruises, ocean cruises, um, you really have to get on this, um, take advantage of the deals because, um, you know, when you wait like, last minute, you're going to pay more and then you're going, mm -hmm. um, uh, things run out easily. Is that correct, Ronald? Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I had a client ask me about um, a sailing on April 16th which is actually not too far away from now on Virgin Boys, but I said, the only thing that is actually out available is the Mega Rockstar Suites, which actually starts around $12,000. Everything else is sold out. So That's why it's important to book early to get advantage yeah. of those deals. And I do, yeah. I want to um, ask you, because you're promoting hard ammo waterways. And actually, when I got into this industry, um, I, I think other than Royal Caribbean and um, mm -hmm. Norwegian Air, Air, I'm going to say Airways, um, Cruise Line <laughs> and Carnival, thanks to Kathy Lee Gifford. Those were the only three cruises that I um, knew for ocean cruises. But for river mm -hmm. cruising, I only knew Amma Waterways thanks to Samantha Brown, because I know she's one of the, um, you know, um, Sponsor a lot of um, sponsorships with Amma Waterways for almost like a, a decade. And that's kind of how um why I was attracted to river I've always been attracted to river cruising because um mm -hmm. that and, and that's thanks to Samantha Brown and thanks because um I love um the Eastern Europe culture, um the Budapest, Vienna, mm -hmm. that whole area of Bratislava, thanks to Eurotrip, you know <laughs> that movie. Um they didn't do anything river cruising. I just I know Bratislava is kind of the, like the main one of the like the middle of those um, if you're doing Budapest to Vienna and um, I, um, I'm wondering you you have sailed on Emma Waterways um, is that correct and I have that was the summer of 2018 so I'm due for one more and it's been a while what do you love about Emma Waterways because I when I see where Samantha Brown travels, I'm like, wow. All right. Well, so other waterways, it's actually, the, the, the number one thing is actually the fact that it's a luxury cruise line. Um, you do have other um, other river cruises out there. And so I chose to go to Emma Waterways because it was suggested by um, another travel agent at that moment. And so I, I was really glad because everything was included, you know, of course, in river cruises, the food and the alcohol, which is mostly wine and beer and, and um, sparkling wine are included, you can actually purchase any uh, a premium alcohol for a particular beverage price kind of thing, uh, beverage package. Um, but all the excursions are actually uh, included, you know, they'll give you one or two, maybe three options to choose from for each port. Um, they'll, you know, it comes with a guide and all that. So it's all inclusive luxury uh, uh, river cruise for them and their service is actually phenomenal. So um, on certain ports, we actually dock next to the other river cruises, uh, cruise lines and, you know, comparing the insides of the ship for Armour Waterways versus, uh, uh, I would call it uh, Viking versus Top. Um, I like Armour Waterways designs and aesthetics even more than the other cruise lines. So uh, you can definitely tell the luxury level of Ama Waterways compared to the other cruise lines there is. But, you know, there are uh, luxury, medium to uh, kind of budget river cruises. So it's really up to you on how you want to um, spend money on a particular uh, vacation uh, going up and down a, a river in Europe. And I always tell my clients that, you know, don't look for the price. Don't look like, oh, it's expensive. You have to look at the right. value. You have to understand yeah. that. You have to understand what you're paying for, um, mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand. They look for, you know, um, you know. I, I'm going to quote a, a minister, uh, one of my min the minister, one of uh, a minister of the gospel at my church. He has uh -huh. this quote: "When you buy, um, uh, when you buy the cheap one, that's what you get. You you buy cheap, you're going to get cheap." 
meaning like you're going to get low quality. But, Basically, yeah. You know, when you, you, when you spend more, you actually get more um, value mm -hmm. than what you pay for. And that's, right. you know, with luxury in general, it's the experience. And I always say too, like you, um, to my, um, anyone who's interested in traveling, whether it's friends or my clients, um, I always say, you know, go the luxury, go the four or five star route, because you know what, you work hard, um, you know, traveling is all about experiences, um, you, you travel to get away from stress, and you need, it, it's kind of like, you, you need to take care of yourself, it's kind of self care, and you have to spend um, your hard earned money, you know, to take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, I mean, that's, that's, that's just me. <laughs> I totally understand that one, and I totally agree. So, I mean, the, the money, the, the value that you put towards to your vacation will actually you know, contribute to the, um, um, what do you call it, the level of relaxation that you'll get during the vacation. So it's less stressful if everything is taken care of by the actual company that you're, you know, booking with, especially with Emma Waterways, you know, the food, the alcohol, the entertainment, uh, as well as the excursions are included. So it's a no-fuss kind of place to be. So it's really good. Um, studying Ammo Water with the, the products that An uh, Ammo, or I should say, the itineraries that Ammo Water Ray promotes. Um, what are the what is the best seller I itinerary for this time around, the, which is springtime? And I'm guessing Amsterdam <laughs> because of the tulips, because that's actually on my bucket list. I do want to do a river <laughs> cruise in Amsterdam, but I'm gonna. Yes. So they do actually have uh, an itinerary called to a lip time where they actually stop by the Belgium uh, uh, ports as well as the Netherlands. And um, uh, you also have Holland and Belgium, uh, anywhere that actually would have any stops for reaching any of the um, toilet locations. But the Netherlands is the number one uh, place to be. Um, I have been to Kuchenhof, which is actually the, the park where they have all of the tulips um uh growing and it's it's such a beautiful place that you know, i i think anybody, you know anybody who's going to go into that uh, river cruise and stop over uh, the netherlands will eventually have the opportunity to go to kuchenhof for that uh scenery and tulips so um that's the number one place to be at the moment until maybe uh late summer so and kuchenhof i need never even heard of that is that actually uh, that's um how far is that from amsterdam or rotterdam or somewhere um, <laughs> the top is probably about an hour south of amsterdam um it's i think it's before you get to rotterdam as well so it's it's um uh, we took a bus of course so and that, that was actually not a bad idea we took the bus from amsterdam um to kuchenhof and dropped us off of there Okay, and um, we're gonna segue from river cruising because, and I'm gonna say, actually, if anyone is thinking of river cruising, um, I, would you suggest, like, if you're a first time river cruiser, should should people go in the springtime? Or, I mean, because that's actually my dream. And I would suggest right. once I tell mm -hmm. river cruises, I would say, yeah, um, springtime, because that's where- Right, yes. Yeah. Spring and summer are the best times to go to river cruises because you know the the weather itself is not going to affect the way uh, you're going to be out going out and about. Now for my December 2024 group, that's you know December 12th to the 19th, and even though that's seven days, that is going to be cold in Europe. So you can't like <clears throat> you can't go swimming on the on the <laughs> on the sun deck. Um, uh, you can go around uh, walking on the deck, but, you know, you'll be fully dressed with a coat and such, depending on the cold weather. So if you want more of an opportunity to be um, on the deck, relaxing, having a drink there, walking around, or even, you know, hanging out at the pool, spring and summertime will be the best way to go. Now, um, we're going to segue because um, uh, today's episode has to do with um, some springtime uh, travel um suggestions or ideas for our viewers and um i would say springtime is one of my favorite times to travel and also it's actually spring is like the beginning of um i would uh say i would say um for most cruises going to into 
Europe. And mm-hmm. this is where also the you're in the European market, this is where all the four star, five star resorts start to open. And I remember mm-hmm. last year I went to Lake Cuomo and it, they um all the four star, five star resorts there um open from there um because the weather is nice and i love going around april because it's actually not busy mm-hmm. and uh, um the reason why i love going to spring well other than that um i have spring break uh because i work in this um the public schools um it's also just um it's kind of like uh i would say you're reviving, I, I don't know for if that's the right word, but from like cold winter or stressful, you know, str- stressful March, you know, because I you know everyone's stressed out um, with like tax season and you know, people mm-hmm. are actually busy at work because, uh, I mean, for educators, we don't have any, um, any breaks and we look forward to um, vacations, you know, going on spring break vacations. And what do you, I want to ask you, Ronald, what do you first love about going on vacation during the springtime? Um, the weather. I mean, it, you know, you just get to go around and uh, wear whatever comfortable clothing that you, that you want to wear. Um, I've gone on a lot of vacations where um, it was the cold season. <clears throat> Sorry, they're going to edit this. Keep going. Just keep talking. I got to open the door. <laughs> and you can start over. Okay. So uh, in terms of springtime um, uh, uh, vacationing or travel, I do prefer the springtime because of the fact that, you know, I, I could um, plan more in terms of what I'm going to bring and, and pack my luggage. Now, I have traveled uh, during the November, December, and sometimes the European countries that I've been to, the weather has been really unpredictable. And so trying to figure out what to pack in luggages, uh, whether I want to bring a, a jacket, a thick one or a light one, or maybe even um, some sweaters, um, it's it's a game of chance to see if, you, if you're gonna be able to bring uh, enough clothing to keep you warm during the cold nights. And so it, that's, that's one thing in terms of planning your your travel so springtime and summer times you can actually have the, the least type of clothing like you get t- t-shirts tank tops or even shorts to bring along with you and maybe like one pair of jeans for evening uh strolls if it tends to get you know cooler at night so yeah and that's the reason why really it's just really the packing version of that <laughs> um mm-hmm. like per se <clears throat> when i went to uh barcelona last august on virgin voyage I packed really light because I knew that it's going to be pretty hot and the destinations that I was going to are pretty warm and uh, humid. And so I was able to actually bring a carry-on luggage, which I don't normally do when I go to Europe. Normally I would go, you know, if I go to Europe, it's a bigger luggage and I, I have multiple type of clothing for any type of weather or, you know, situation. But knowing the fact that I'm going to go to a very hot location, I just, I can pack very light. So... That's my spiel. Yeah, and it depends and where you're going because yeah. um, if you're going to Europe during the spring, if you have to pack, um, say, even an umbrella or a poncho because it is rainy. You know, April showers bring me flowers. Um, mm-hmm. You know, light jacket, depending where you're going. If you're going to, like, say, London, Paris. Um, I mean, it's a little bit warmer if you go to Barcelona, Rome, uh, Athens. Um, but if anyone is going to, say, Asia, you know, um, in Asia, it depends on when you're going. That is actually the brink of like the the, the nicer um, season. Uh, I would say dry season if you're going to say Philippines or right. Singapore, um, and it's springtime. Um, one of the most beautiful times to go see the cherry blossoms in Korea and Japan. So uh, mm-hmm. when you pack. <laughs> Oh, people have to take in mind like how's the weather there and you know are you gonna uh, yeah. bring um a big uh luggage because if you have puffalo bones or it doesn't even probably i don't do puffalo bones <laughs> the um the the christmas market you know that's where you're gonna probably see a lot of 
uh, ornaments and whatever gifts that you want to bring home. So you definitely need to plan accordingly to, you know, to like maybe bring another luggage for those extra things that you might buy. So it'll be interesting if I can fit in certain things and, you know, like not have to bring a second luggage just because of that. Now I want to ask you, Ronald, um, name maybe, let's say three, three destinations where you would, uh, um, where you like to go or have been one of your favorite places you have gone during the springtime mm -hmm. and why, and just tell our audience like um, why they should go there around this time, because, you know, you could see, I'm, I'm, I'm staring at your um, background because I do love San Francisco during <laughs> <laughs> the springtime, but um, that might, I'm thinking of like, is that one of the places you like to go to during the springtime? <laughs> I, that, that's a funny thing because, um, uh, about back in 2018, um, I took this long, maybe two weeks vacation uh, towards the West Coast, and San Francisco was one of the stops that I, I that I was uh, planning to go to. So, <clears throat> um, uh, I went to visit my best friend, and of course, that was in the springtime. And so, I've gone to like Las Vegas, L. play San Diego in the springtime at that point in time in March even in the March or early April it's still cold here on the east coast but once you get on the west coast it's pretty hot it's pretty awesome so you also that's another thing like you won't have to worry about packing too much because you know it's just going to be very warm you pack lighter type of clothing so um so <clears throat> those th top three things so San Francisco well I guess four Las Vegas even like I don't gamble, but I do like to go see the show, especially like Cirque du Soleil kind of thing. Um, uh, San Diego, as well as LA. LA, I go there for the food. <laughs> um, I, Who doesn't I, I, like I, to go to LA or anywhere for the food? That's basically. basically, <laughs> basically yeah. Um, <clears throat> I stayed in a, a, a hotel in East LA one time and I, I found a hole in the wall, but not really a hole in the wall. Japanese restaurant and this is possibly one of those famous places very small and you know in, in, in tucked in into this neighborhood but once you walk in you see this famous people's photos you know pictured with the, the person who owns the the restaurant but it's one of those things like oh you actually just walk around and you discover this restaurant who's actually pretty famous and well known by Hollywood stars so it's pretty neat that's awesome. I was, I'm going to show you some of my favorite um, springtime travel um, mm -hmm. places I've been to. And I think one of my memorable ones was going to the America Southwest. And I did that too with my mom. We did this whole Thelma Louise um, tour. <laughs> in the, and America Southwest, I went there 2016. And it was, I think I was teaching third grade at that time. And I got actually in inspired to go there because we were learning about canyons and um, mm -hmm. uh, what are those like geographic, uh, geographical geology, like rocks. And um, and if you go to America Southwest, I'm thinking about New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Nevada. And then when you mm -hmm. go there, it's like the desert. And I, I got inspired by what we were learning in geography or geology, I should say, um, during that time, um, and I was I was working at a gifted, talented um, school oh, at that time. So they actually know um, places in that area: Grand Canyon, uh, Arches. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the places of I went to. I went to New Mexico, which is one of the most uh, beautiful places that you could go to in the in the world. Right. That's good. That's really awesome. Oh, shoot! Hold on. They're going to have to do a lot of editing here. <laughs> we'll cut that. Yeah. And um, my first stop um, during that trip was New Mexico. And mm -hmm. I think I got that from Samantha Brown. And she went during the springtime. Yeah. And um, my first thought was um, Albuquerque. Because when you go to Albuquerque, Santa Fe, it's the same airport. And they're um, mm -hmm. one hour from each other. Albuquerque, you don't have to do. There's not really much to do do there other than Old Town Albuquerque 
and the whole Route 66 um, place. But it's actually Santa Fe that is beautiful because it's all the, the adobe houses. Um, um, if you're into art, Georgia O'Keeffe Museum is there. Um, Canyon okay. Road is one of the most beautiful. It has like these beautiful windmills. There's, it's, uh, if anyone is into um, art, that's like that Santa Fe is the um one of the uh beautiful places to see and it's actually the place that Samantha Brown loves to go back every time she falls in love with Santa Fe you know every time she goes back there and I asked her that during the travel and adventure show and out of all the places I said um in the world um that uh that you've been to which destination do you love going back to every time and she said mm -hmm. Santa Fe and I tell her I tell every I say I say this all the time in the podcast how Samantha Brown is like the inspiration of my travels <laughs> and and um from Santa Fe um because I was also oh this is why I traveled to, um to, to that area during 2016 we were also learning in the curriculum about the Hopi, Navajo, um, mm -hmm. the, the Pueblo Indians. So I wanted to actually see Native Americans, real Native Americans. And then Te uh, Taos or Teos, um, which is about an oh, three hours north of Santa Fe, mm -hmm. where you actually see the, you know, the Pueblo uh, Indians and they reside in that area. And that actually is reserve for them and you're not allowed to take any pictures of them because they're very um particular about um being exposed in the in the media and that was actually and i know, knew about teos or taos mm -hmm. i should say because of Ju that's where julia roberts and her husband actually reside i don't know if they um uh reside there currently i know that's one of their um I think they have a home in that area and that's a, and it's a UNESCO site. Um, okay. um, that that's beautiful. And then even that drive, New Mexico is just very colorful. Um, and I, uh, I just remember how like just driving, I, I just had fun just driving on the highway. That was just like mm -hmm. my um, favorite adventure and that trip just driving like these road like I'm from New York you know and there's no honking and you're just on the road and just I'm just like looking at like the beautiful um paintings that are in the highway right. in New Mexico and then from that I went to New Mexico made a stop at uh Colorado um so I forgot what the uh Colorado oh my god what am I it's the railroad um I, I can't think Boulder no not Boulder oh my god I can't believe um it's so all right I'm, you know what um I will tell you next week <laughs> when <that's laughs> you're driving through Colorado and then from Colorado I went to Arches and oh, okay. Arches, and I say this um um I <laughs> And I suggest this is and anyone who's going who wants to go to Arches or Utah, the best time to go is spring because it's not hot. It's still cool and it's beautiful to hike. Okay. And I only did because Arches uh, National Park is just huge. So I only did the you know the the important part that you see in um, uh, everyone's Instagram. And that's like I think that's about seven miles from the from the entrance of the park to see the, the right. arch the, that arch. And um, when you go to arches, it's so beautiful. It's it's kind of like what you see in pictures. It's actually what you see in the um, in reality. And that goes to that's also like Grand Canyon too. Okay. And I, last week, um, Jeff Powid was on. And he said one of his favorite places was um, Grand Canyon, going to Grand Canyon, because, you know, what you see in the photos is exactly what you see, um, you know, like, in person, too. Um, but I have to say, oh. um, between, I know Grand Canyon um, gets a lot of um, hype, um, mm -hmm. but, and everybody marvels of it, but I love I, I love arches. That was like out of my all the national parks that I went to in that America Southwest. That was my favorite. And I also went to Bryce Canyon too. 
And um, funny thing is we, we were talking about um, uh, clothing and what to pack. And little did I know that it, the, the time I went to Bryce Canyon, it was snowing in Utah. <laughs> And I'm like, it's spring. And I'm like, oh, gosh. And it was cold. I'm like, okay, I didn't prepare um, uh, <laughs> on this trip. And then uh, to end my trip, because my mom got sick of looking at uh, rocks and formations, my last stop was Las Vegas and because she, want, she wanted to see bright lights, big city. I'm like, no. And she got sick of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I was forced. So that's Barack. one of my favorite. Great. Yeah. Um, so that's one of my favorite to go to America Southwest, um, that area. And then mm. obviously I love um, Europe in the spring. I've been to Paris and I've mentioned last year I went to Milan and Lake Cuomo. Um, but Paris um, and I'm going to Paris again this year for the uh, second mm. time. When I went to Paris in the springtime, that was back in 2001 when well. Um, the French were still using francs. Uh -huh. <laughs> the euro didn't exist. And Paris, and you've been to Paris, Ronald. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've yeah. been to Paris in the springtime, but uh, Paris in the springtime, or I mean, Paris in general is just so romantic. And I love it in the springtime because I actually like um, the rain, like in the umbrella and your <laughs> Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and that's actually when I went to the Eiffel Tower, um, it was raining. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. And it, was, it wasn't it was those annoying things. It, for me, that's just like iconic for, you know, um, springtime in, the, in Paris. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I also, I don't know if you also ever seen that movie with Ethan Hawke before sunrise or before sunset. I don't know if it was sunrise or sunset. There's two movies. Well. Um, I, oh no, I'm sorry. That's actually held in Vienna. My bad. <laughs> I think I'm thinking the, the, the actress is French, but right. <laughs> erase that, everybody. But yeah, Paris <laughs> is one of my favorite times to go. Like Paris in spring is just, uh, I mean, lost for words. It, words are <laughs> just undescribable. Un and then right. maybe my third one, I mean, I have to. I don't know if I should say New York City um, in spring. Is it my favorite? No, I'm actually, yes, I'm going to say New York City because of the Macy's Flower Show. And I, <laughs> I oh, like, okay. that's um, one of my favorite places. If anyone is going to New York um, during the springtime, you know, and if you love flowers, um, check out the Macy's Flower Show. It's just, there's this whole array of flowers. Are you talking about the Roses Parade or something like that? Well, Roses Parade is, that's actually Pasadena. Um, is it? Okay, yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, um, and you're not going to, people are not going to know this too, because this is more of a local thing. And mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, when I was working in Brooklyn um, and during the springtime, um, we did a day, uh, day trip to Snug Harbor out in Staten Island. It's one of the most beautiful okay. gardens, um, um, uh, beautiful gardens, I think, in um, out of all the gardens to go to in New York City between the five mm -hmm. boroughs. So yeah. springtime in New York is, you know, it's never, mm -hmm. any time in New York is um, never, um, it's never a miss, but I do love spring in New York because of, flowers and then there's also right. botanic gardens too when anything where you see flowers it's just um beautiful uh no matter um i would say around this time i just say um because it's it's spring <laughs> right. now i am i had um i wanted you to uh help me because we're on the topic of spring travels because uh I am going to Washington DC for the first time in since 2000, I think it's 17 or 18 or 16 or 15. I'm not sure. Um, it's been a while, but, um, and I think in previous episodes, I think it was your first, when you first came on um, the podcast, I, I was saying that I do the same thing in Washington DC because 
it's one of those great day trips um, to take from New York and cheap because you could take the Greyhound, Mega Bus, even Amtrak, or if you want to get there quick, it's a 45 minute flight um, from LaGuardia to Ronald Reagan Airport. Um, uh-huh. And but I do the same thing. It's always the Memorial, Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> Washington. There's nothing wrong with that. But this time around, um, there's more to D.C. than the memorials. And that's one of the things that tourists do. But now uh, that I'm kind of like uh, an adventurous, I should say, and, you know, and I also have this goal for this year that I wanted to explore cities, um, both internationally and domestically, the food scene. And I'm starting yeah. that first. Um with Washington, D.C. Now, I know there's a lot of um, Michelin <coughs> restaurants and uh, celebrity chefs. Um, I, I'm going to name one Filipino one that's popular is Paolo Dunca, uh, um, who's a popular chef based out of um, based out in D.C. But um, tell me what's uh, what's what's there to do in D.C. outside the memorials and Ben's Chili. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lived in, in DC for quite a while now, but I, I I've only gotten Venice Chili at least twice in my lifetime here. Um, it's it's really good. It's a you know very iconic location that everybody you know should go experience because it is a DC staple. But anyway, um, in terms of just the you know the touristy area, um, of course, one thing that you could do is, and some people don't know about this, if you are into performing arts. Um, the Kennedy Center, uh, John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts is an actual memorial to John F. Kennedy. And so you can actually get a tour for free. Um, uh, weekends, it's from uh, 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 12.30. And then weekdays are from 10 to 6 p.m. And so a lot of people don't know about that, but you can definitely get the tour uh, for free, of course. Um, <clears throat> And then, of course, you know, the food scene is, uh, is definitely good. Now, I, I think I mentioned to you a couple of days ago that there, there is a, a section called the Wharf. Um, and that location is actually pretty brand new. They're still, they are still trying to put together um, uh, more uh, retail locations, restaurants and all that, and um, other events and all that. But there's a lot of restaurants there. And of course, if you want a food from Filip- like a Filipino food, there is a place called Kaliwa. Uh, it's a, I think, Korean uh, and Filipino and something else. Three different type of cuisines, but it's Filipino and Korean in there. It's actually pretty good. Not too bad at all. Um, it's not your typical Filipino food, of course, but it comes close to it. Um, other things, of course, uh, besides the um, uh, touristy place, if you go to Virginia, and you love wine, you can actually go to, sorry. Uh-oh, you can actually go down to, something. <laughs> no, I, I put down someone. <laughs> oh, Romeo. <laughs> um, you can go down to the wineries down in Virginia. So they have tons of wineries in Virginia. And of course, if you're, um, since it is going to be springtime and summertime, you can enjoy uh, lots of wine and cheese and, you know, uh, a charcuterie uh, food uh, while you're just sipping away wine at the uh, the wineries. So it's actually pretty nice places to go because that's that's further down south of Virginia, but it's really part of the DMV, which is DC, Maryland, Virginia kind of culture things to do. If you want, if you're looking for something else that's not in DC, definitely the wineries is the way to go. So every uh, uh, every traveler should run DMV. You guys get it? Run DMC. Run DMV. <laughs> oh boy, we're trying our age. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Also, um, I was reading Travel and Leisure um, uh-huh. article about fifty places to see um, in twenty twenty three, and one of the places that they mentioned is Alexandria, Virginia. What's going on? What's What's happening there? The that portion is really they're referring to the Old Town section of Alexandria, Virginia. Um, Old Town, Virginia. You got the um, Old Town type of 
uh, architecture. You can actually go to um, uh, ghost tours around that area. And then like maybe the five, 10 miles down the road is also Mount Vernon Estate where Washington grew up. Uh, so that particular uh, cluster of area is where people would flock to, to go for um, <clears throat> river cruises, like up and down Potomac River. You can either have a day trip kind of thing uh, where you just go on, a, on the boat and just go up and down for a couple of hours. Or you can actually have, uh, do lunch or dinner cruises on uh, 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 another, maybe at least two different type of boats. And then that'll go up and down the uh, Potomac River as well. So it's been a hot spot for people just to kind of like get on the boat and sightsee from a ship while enjoying meals and drinks uh, in DC. Nice. Now, what um, I, I've read so many travel books um, all my life. <laughs> Um, mainly um, the ones that I go to are Fromers, um, Fromers, Lonely Planet. Um, I would say those mm -hmm. two, Fromers, Lonely Planet. Um, and I'm going to mention about Fromers because Fromers usually has like suggested one day itineraries, three days okay. or, or a week. So I'm actually going to ask you just what would, uh, what would a three day itinerary um, look like uh, in your in your opinion, I would just say in uh, your ideal three-day itinerary to do, because I only have three days there and I'm asking you to follow up my day and where well, I should stay and which area. Go ahead, Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, you know, for anybody who wants to do a, a three-day excursion throughout the D.C. area, um, if you have a car, of course, anywhere in D.C. is a, a must-do. Um, and then you can actually go to Annapolis. Uh, the city is actually beautiful, very historic, lots of places to go and hang out. Um, you can also check out, you know, the Naval Academy there if you want to check out the campus. Uh, it's a pretty neat place. And then, um, of course, people like to go to go to Baltimore. They also, in Baltimore, you know, even though it's just the main city, um, there's pockets of neighborhoods that are very historical as well, and they do uh, tours as well, like the historical tours. And then you got the National Harbor, not National Harbor, the Baltimore Harbor, where you have the aquarium and um, other places to eat. And then you have a little Italy, of course. Everything's about food now. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Every, it's every food food. Stuff. I know, and honestly, you know, travel, like people want to travel because of, because of food. You know, yeah. they want to try whatever they see on Netflix or whatever they see on it's because of Netflix. Instagram um, is all about, you know, that's the food porn. Uh, that's where that's, <laughs> that's where to go for food porn. It, I, I thought I'm just naming off you know, locations, but here I am. I'm, I'm actually, you know, picking locations based on the food. But of course, if you're going to Annapolis and Baltimore, you got to try our seafood. You got a blue crab, uh, crabs available for you to, you know, sit at a restaurant and sit there for a couple of hours and uh, possibly just eat all the crabs you can and enjoy it. <laughs> and, you know, um, I love Maryland crabs or uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm debating between Maryland crabs and the crabs in Virginia Beach. <laughs> kind of like, you know, neck and neck. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming from almost the same same Potomac River area ish. <laughs> or maybe they're, they're all in the same ocean. I mean, they're all along the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, so if you have a, yeah, so if you have a car, definitely try this out. But if you don't have a car, you definitely have to stick around the DC area. I mean, of course, besides the tourist area, it depends on what you're looking for. You know. Yeah, I won't have you're a car. So, you won't have a car. So what I kind of do you, would you want to do? Or what, you, what kind of things are you looking to do? Well, here's um, one thing. I, I haven't checked out the work, and that's pretty new. And that's where all the restaurant scenes, uh, that's where right. the restaurant scene, and everyone says that's one of the most, um, that's kind of um, the it place right now because it's new. Um, I do want to um, even uh, explore Explore some of the neighborhoods. I mean, I've been to like Adams Morgan. I've been to Georgetown. Um, where else have I been to? Chinatown. I always have a, this um, when I travel domestically, or I, no, yeah. not even when I travel both domestically and internationally. 
China, uh, seeing Chinatown is always on my bucket list. Because last year I did go to Chinatown in Milan. Um, it's funny. It's uh, Chinatown in Milan, but you see Filipinos. Um, uh, it's Filipino worker. It's Chinese um, business people running <laughs> it. The Filipinos are the ones serving you because Milan has right. a, a, a huge Filipino population. Um, and that, that's one of, I haven't been, I mean, I've, I haven't been to DC's Chinatown in a very long time. And I'm wondering, um, I, I mean, I'm actually wondering, um, how similar and different Chinatown there is to say, I'm, cause I'm looking at San Francisco, <laughs> your background, <laughs> <laughs> because they have one of the largest Chinatowns in in America and in New York City. So I like to always compare and contrast um, the Chinatowns um, everywhere in the world. <laughs> well, unfortunately in DC, it's no longer a Chinatown, it's mostly like a China block. Oh. <laughs> it's really, really small. Um, it is, it is, is like a tiny green, huh? It is, I think, is around like eight around three? It's 8th Street between 7th and 6th Street. So definitely that's the only place. But now the fact that there are so many different de de uh, development that took place there in the past 10, 15 years, um, all of the uh, Chinese businesses have been, unfortunately, been driven out because of real estate uh, prices and rent and leasing. So uh, you have your small areas where you do have the, you know, the Chinese restaurants where you can actually buy uh, Peking duck that is actually just hanging out in the window. Um, there's a place where you can actually buy uh, um, uh, noodles that are actually handmade in front of you. So you can actually watch the whole process. That's just pretty cool. Um, uh, th there is a famous restaurant called Tony Chen's. Uh, that is more of the more authentic uh, restaurant family style, of course, because they're mostly like a big, bigger table that fits maybe eight to 10 people with a big lazy suits in the middle. Um, you'll, you'll choose like a whole family feast kind of thing. But yeah, it, it's nothing compared to San Francisco. When I first saw the San Francisco Chinatown, I was amazed, totally amazed. And I didn't know where it was until I was just walking around downtown. I'm like, oh, there's Chinatown with this little itty bitty, you know, gate thing to go into yeah. that main road. But then yeah. once you go inside, yeah. you get lost with so many different alleys and roads that are actually going to shops and all this. I was like, holy moly, that's huge. You know, our Chinatown gate, it's, it's huge. It's, it, it covers the entire street, you know, two, uh, uh, both ways. But with the San Francisco Chinatown, it's just like a one-way street. Mostly pedestrians, it's tiny. But then it's like, once you go in there, it is immaculate. Now, yeah, and a lot of alleys, too. And then, you know, how San Francisco is just, you know, this zigzag. And <laughs> yeah. But so I don't I don't know exactly how it is compared to New York City Chinatown. The Chinatown in New York City is just more spread out. Yes, it's huge, and it's also there's different yeah. areas, and then there's the residential areas, and then there's right. the spots that are tourist. It's actually like a whole neighborhood, um, mm -hmm. and it's all it's not like San Francisco where it's zigzag, and it's not as small as right. Washington D.C.'s. But yeah, there's different areas. Um, right. So, um, in Chinatown, there's the uh, where the authentic chi uh, Chinatown where it's basically there's no English. Um, it's basically oh. Chinese and wow. cash only. Um, and that's actually the the part of Chinatown that I like to go to and take okay. people cook the food, and it's cheaper. And then there's the touristy side where you see the souvenirs, Mott Street, yeah. Prince Street, um, Elizabeth Street. Um, that's kind of the Chinatown that everybody knows about and that's shown right. on Netflix and Instagram and 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 so forth. I mean uh, interesting. Right? That is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One more question. I mean I should say two more questions and we're gonna go back to uh, DC. Um, right. um any have you eaten in any Michelin star restaurants in, in DC? Um Michelin star in DC, I don't think I have. Oh, you're um, not a real, food, a real foodie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, that's good that too, because, um, you know, you're eating more like the, you know, the foodie, like the, like, or I'll say, um, since you've never eaten in Michelin, how about food trucks? Is there any food trucks that you recommend for me to 
to try because oh my every God, there's time too, there's too many <laughs> okay name because uh, i'm only there for three days okay name two food trucks that i have to try because if i were to tell you um which food trucks you should try here in new york i would say uh -huh. you can't halal guys that's just kind of like you know the the everyone needs to go and it's what's good about halal guys is that it's you know 24 hours and it's halal guys specifically in 53rd street and 6th avenue and then uh, i will say but and one food tr or a uh, food truck trucks i should say um i'll i'll recommend and you have to go out in outside uh queens you gotta find a souvlaki truck specifically in astoria queens or uh really? um a mexican or i yeah a mix uh, birria tacos I don't know if that's popular out there in um, DC. Um, it's kind of like a soup um, based taco and you just dip it in. Um, that's popular. Really? I actually, yeah, that's one of the popular food trucks um, uh, out here in New York. So I'm wondering what's popular out there um, in the food truck scene in DC. But see, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know how many food trucks you normally see in one area, but if you actually go down to the Smithsonian areas, uh, most likely 14th Street, they line up mostly in one way, uh, on one side of the street. It depends on, depends on which day, but there's so many. But yeah, uh, Halal Guys, uh, I, I don't know if it's exactly the same name for the truck, but Halal uh, uh, Food Trucks is one of my favorite places to go. <laughs> so it's actually pretty awesome. And then um, there is a, uh, of course, the more famous but expensive is this um i forget what it's called but they sell lobster rolls and oh. fry it is yeah. so good however it's 15 dollars, but it's 15 dollars with fries which is really good because the fries is also seasoned with old bay seasoning <laughs> oh i love old bay seasoning that's that's kind of isn't that like a secret um the secret sauce to maryland crab crab cakes <laughs> Well, well, yeah. I mean, they put a little bit of, a, of this, this uh, old bay seasoning in there, but it's not like you know drenched in there. But you know, when you do uh, eat crab uh, crabs, uh, it's you know the crabs are pretty much cooked in uh, into uh, old bay seasoning, but it's really good. So, and that's number one. And then, of course, there's uh, a lot of steak and cheese um, food trucks. Now, I know it's not going to be the same as Philadelphia or New York, but to us, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> Well, I think that's thing... top Philly. That's the thing. Even New York, <laughs> New York cheesesteaks. It's just, I mean, Philly is in another planet with the the, uh, so. the cheese ways. <laughs> but you know, the cheese, the cheesesteaks are steak and cheese. I try to stay away from there because it's actually pretty, um, pretty messy to eat. Like, so of course your food trucks. You you know you put it in a box or you, it's given to you in a box. You have to find a place to uh, to sit down, and you know they give you this little flimsy small squared napkins and like once one it's like a one white kind of napkin and they don't give you enough and but of course if you eat steak and cheese your hands and maybe your whole mouth will just be full of grease because it's just that good wow no so, i mean yeah i'm not looking to anything particular or or maybe there's one thing i'm probably looking in particular is like kind of like the what the dc staple is um, okay. I also just want a picture of Ben Chili's bowl because <laughs> I never <laughs> took one. Just you know, I kind of like I iconic. It's like going to New York and you never take um and you don't take a selfie uh at Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know if that's the, the the same thing. Or I'll just say what's um uh. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, I, I guess that that's how I, I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but thank you, Ronald. Um, thanks for always uh, coming on with your you know expertise and your suggestions. I always ha love having you um, on because I enjoy talking to you. Like doing this podcast would just be like a, a normal conversation, and you know all about. I have to say, learning to um, if for those who are listening, you know. You have to um, learn how to travel by listening. These are just one of the many ways that you learn how to travel wise. And, you know, you got the best of the best in the industry here, or I, I should say I'm, I'm self, -prom I'm promoting myself and you too. So, <laughs> and I want to tell our audience, FK, if um, 
this is the the guy that you need to book your river cruise and ammo and he's saying ammo waterway so get get down and start um uh, looking for what itinerary you want to do for 2024 or even 2020. I think they're also selling for 2025 as, as well. Not, not yet, not yet. Not only yet. 2024, okay. 2024. Only 2024. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're still in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I know. I like. I always go to you when I have a. Uh, you're like my cruise cruise guy um, dictionary. Um, and I, you know, if I don't know anything, I, I will refer to it, refer to you. So thank you, Ronald, for coming on you're today. Very welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and thank you to our viewers, um, because without your help, um, this podcast would be impossible. And. For anyone who is looking to travel this year, 2023, or in next year, 2024, don't be afraid to hit us up. Uh, hit me or Ronald up or any TravelWise International advisor. You could go on itravelwise.com and you could um, go on any discovery call, um, uh, book a discovery call for any of the uh, travel advisors um, and see where you want to go this year or next year, whether it's on a cruise, a land tour, and it's got to be luxury, guys, because that's, you get the best, um, the best of your, your buck. Yep. Smart People Travel Wise airs every Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 noon Pacific. I'm Tenny Samaki. See you again next time. Take care. <laughs>